Let's build more train stations in the city. Let's move to another leg of the railway network from the main transportation hub and build one more high capacity public transport transfer stations. Because just like with all the other train stations in the city, it will also serve as a hub for trams. Hello and welcome everyone to Astur City in City Skylines. This project will take us in the opposite direction from the previous couple of episodes because we will move closer to the area with the first highway interchange and the suspended high-speed railway bridge from some time ago. Here we have a natural crossing of the inner ring tram line, coastline tram and of course the trains. So let's get to it. Oh and by the way, this is the first video I made in 1440p since I got a new 4070 graphics card, so make sure to switch it up if you are able. But even in 1080p, the cinematics should look thousand times better since I'm recording them with 8K settings in dynamic resolution in the game. Uh, nothing I can do about YouTube's compression though, sadly. Anyways, back to Asturias. Okay, so I'm going to start with that train station and it's business as usual. It's going to be elevated, it's going to have a couple more tracks and these same looking platforms just like before. Although this station is different and it is different in the number of tracks. I am using many more tracks than would be needed for just an ordinary train stop and also platforms. So the main uh, reason behind that is that I just want to have it asymmetric First and foremost, it's going to be interesting for some details and, you know, just overall visuals of the area. And also I'm thinking that this might be like the second most important station, train station of the city. So I would like to add more like bypass tracks and just like side tracks, yeah, for some trains parking or something, something like that. Also, there is that little single track connector that goes to that other leg of the railway system. So yeah, maybe that's why this train station could be a little bit more important. So the main corridor has four tracks. It has the two middle tracks for cargo only. Those must be left completely, you know, untouched, uninterrupted. And then we have those uh, outer tracks for the metro trains or, you know, for the regular trains that we have in the city. And I'm thinking that I don't want to have stops on those tracks. So let's just build a couple of bypass tracks. And because I want to have it asymmetric, the bypass on this upper side is going to go like on the other side of this platform. Yeah, so it's going to be a double platform and uh, I'm actually going to be using the outer one. Okay, and there is also another track there, some kind of sidings track maybe or something uh, just to make it more interesting. Nothing more to it. Right, so this design allowed me to finally find a place for that particular building that I placed there that I managed to squeeze between those tracks. That's a building that I initially downloaded for Altengrad because it's a real life building from Berlin from around the appropriate decades that we are in right now in Altengrad. But I just, you know, found, found a place for it in Asturias first. It's a very futuristic looking building, so, you know, it feels very appropriate here. And it just fits, it just perfectly fits. So it might be some kind of control tower for the trains or just some kind of, you know, railway company administration or just generic office, doesn't really matter. But uh, visually, it just works absolutely perfectly in this place. It's gonna be the main center point of this entire place and it's actually going to be the highest building as well. I made sure to not build anything taller than that one. So it remains very important. Now, uh, what are we building here with the trams? Before this episode, before this project, I actually had to revisit my plans for the tram network of the entire city and I think that I'm more or less done planning it. Uh, I think that some of the lines still need some fine tuning, some polishing because I eventually did some changes. Uh, I, for example, planned on building like a tram tunnel to go near those dams, but uh, I did not do that eventually because the place that we built there is not really all that super large, so just the train station there is enough. So yeah, on that side of the city, of the downtown basically, I will have to revisit the plans a little more, but on this side I am 100% sure how it's going to continue. Right, so right next to this train station we are going to build this tram loop. This tram loop is going to be for the coastline tram, okay? 
but uh, there is also the inner ring tram line that goes into this area. So that's why I'm creating those double platforms. This is pretty much exactly the same approach as I was doing on the other side of the downtown with that vertical brutalist, you know, tram station or sorry, train station with the tram stations below it. I also built uh, two two platforms for the trams side by side. So they are not interrupted. Yeah, we can just have one of the trams arrive, just do its thing and just leave on completely separate tracks. Exactly the same thing here, except one of those, the coastline, uh, coastline line is going to terminate here and it's just going to turn around in that loop and continue, uh, continue in the opposite direction. And this finally leads me to the main motivation of this project, why I even decided to go here, because this place is actually kind of disconnected from the rest of the city. There are plenty of other projects that I have in mind right now that I could just do right on the edges of the finished area. So why am I in, in the open here? Well, it's because I really want to start doing the first person rides and the coastline track is actually almost done. The only place that needs to be done, needs to be finished is, well, this area that we are here right now. So some kind of a terminus station for that coastline track. So that's exactly what the loop is for. I really don't want to take this track anywhere further. At least, well, at first I thought I'm just going to take it past the highway interchange, you know, through it or somehow. I think I talked about it with that highway interchange. Uh, the city is just not going to continue in that direction anyway. So might as well end this track over here. The the ring line doesn't really need doubling on the, on these tracks. So yeah, that's exactly why the loop here makes so much more sense. So the main goal for today is to just create the scenery around the tracks. That is why it doesn't really need to be connected to the rest of the city just yet, this project. It uh, doesn't really need to be complete on the edges. It's actually going to be super rough on the edges. I'm just going to indicate some couple of buildings and a couple of building blocks that will really only serve the main goal of this area. Yeah, and that is just to create some kind of almost like a film set, you know, which is just like cardboard set on the sides of some kind of like action scene. And uh, on the other sides is just like supported by wooden beams or something like that. That's exactly this place. It really is supposed to be just a set for the first person ride of the tram. Now, the tram is obviously going to go through the center of this area, so it's not really gonna be like half finished, yeah, the train station today. The train station is definitely gonna be completely finished, but not really the buildings around it. But that's kind of logical, that's kind of the same story for every single project in Asturias. The entire Asturias kind of fits together, yeah, so there are no disconnected projects apart from whatever we did near those dams, yeah, but that was like a one-time thing. Anyway, I suppose the space elevator is also kind of disconnected. Okay, so second thing, uh, well, maybe the industrial zone that we will do sometime in the future. Okay, three things, but not more than that, okay? On the mainland, yes, on the mainland, we are not really going to have disconnected things in the city. Right, so there is one more project that, okay, so that's actually going to be fourth disconnected project. Okay, whatever. But there is another project that we actually need to do before the first person ride video. And that is, I don't think you can see it from these, from these uh, time-lapse shots, but if you imagine that this tram line is uh, entering this tunnel and it's exiting just below that suspended railway bridge, yeah, from a couple of episodes back, then it's looking directly on the opposite end of the of the space elevator bay yeah on the on like a the second coastline or something like that and that's that's where all the fancy bridges are leading to yeah but right now there's nothing there the bridges are just ending and it's looking super terrible from the first person view of the tram so i have to build something in there it's not really right next to the tracks where we will be going but it's in the view of the tram so that's what i really need to finish Ideally, I would also need to complete, for example, the industrial zone on the opposite end of the space elevator bay, basically in the direction of that stacked bridge. But uh, that would just take me so much more time. And I really do want to make those first person ride videos already. I'm actually really looking forward to making those because I haven't made one in a real long time. And since then, well, I got the graphics card update, so it's going to look so much more better, so much better. 
And also the coastline tram does not really have Asturias, like the downtown Asturias in the view. So I should actually have reasonably good FPS when recording it. So, you know, that's going to be nice. I can record it in some reasonable time, not really spend uh, the entire day doing that as usual. And also I have the new uh, first person camera mod, which is uh, so much more convenient to use. It's not really that new anymore, but uh, that just illustrates how, uh, how it's been a really long time since I've done a first person video. So yeah, very, very much looking forward to it. And hopefully you guys are looking forward to it as well. Right, so the main goal for this project, yep, finish the scenery for the first person tram. Next project will need to be some sort of different scenery further outside of these tracks, yeah, but they are very much in the view, so we will have to do it. Not sure if I'm going to be doing doing it in a single episode, yeah, because that coastline is huge and there are lots of places that are actually in the view and I really don't want to rush it. I really want to make, make that area good because it's actually going to be a starting point for yet another first person ride for the trams. This time the tram that goes directly through the city center. Yeah, that's the first person ride that I would really like to do during the night time because of all the lights and it's going to cross that uh, that lightsaber bridge. Yeah, so that's going to look so so good. So it must originate in some kind of fancy area as well and that's going to be the topic of the next video, maybe next next as well, but we will see, we will see, okay? I haven't started building it yet, so I cannot really tell right now. Anyway, let's go back to this area and start explaining it a little bit more. So what exactly am I doing in here? And let's start with this particular place in the time lapse. Well, this is basically like a trench, like, a, like an approach towards this tunnel. This tunnel is actually not super necessary in here, but uh, well, it's already established from the previous project, so might as well continue it. And uh, it's kind of like a shortcut because, you know, if you do a tunnel, you don't really need to detail around it for some kind of first person ride. So you just see the tunnel walls and uh, well, that's kind of convenient in this particular area. And it's just like something different, you know, every once in a while go into a tunnel. Right, so this trench is also very convenient to detail because of, you know, you don't really need to do anything above it since the first person view is not going to see that. So we are going to leave some of the polishing of this area for later and just focus on the goal that I already repeated like a billion times today. So I'm just going to detail right around the tracks. As you can see, there is, for example, this like a sunken area with some of these residential buildings. There's going to be this parking lot road, which these are, by the way, the roads that I prepared for Altengrad. I'm not really sure about the schedule right now if I already uh, showed the episode from Altengrad where I used these particular roads. Uh, no, actually, no. Yeah, it is. Actually, no, because it's going to take a couple of episodes before I'm uh, I'm going to show you the better graphics in Altengrad, actually. Yeah, Asturias is a little earlier or behind, depending on how you look at it. But it nev never mind, I digress. So uh, this place is a little sunken. It's going to be actually a dead end. I'm just detailing some kind of like entrance into this underground uh, part. Actually, this entrance might serve as like a resupply entrance for some of the uh, commercial places on the other side of the tunnel, yeah? If you remember that plaza just before that suspended railway bridge. Uh, that's actually like a really convenient way of uh, delivering cargo into it because this road is otherwise not very much used. It's it's a dead end, like, like you can see over here. So above the trench in here, I'm just going to place a couple of these buildings. These are kind of going to be visible from the first person view. So we have to do it. And uh, well, since we already have some kind of verticality going on over here, might as well somehow connect it with, for example, these pedestrian paths. These buildings already have, uh, it looks like some kind of glass, huge glass windows, uh, probably as part of some kind of staircases at the fronts of the buildings. So it might as well be connected with these pedestrian paths to the same level of, uh, of the terrain over the trench because it just creates something interesting in the area. It kind of breaks the trench because the trench is kind of long and it's also kind of deep, yeah? So just doing these uh, pedestrian paths over it, you know, might as well. 
Now, doing some details, doing some ends to these pedestrian paths, I'm basically making them go to these parking lot roads, which are also dead end. Oh, by the way, the main point why most of the roads around this area are dead end, not this sunken one though, but the rest of them, is that the train station area is completely pedestrian only, yeah? The main road that cuts through this place is underground. I, I have to admit, I was taking some inspiration from some research from Altengrad, and especially from some German cities that I was kind of studying for some unrelated things. And there are a couple of places, actually quite a lot of places, where some of the main avenues are led down to these uh, very short tunnels underneath some pedestrian places or like uh, main areas where it would be just kind of clunky to, you know, take it through them. So yeah, that's exactly the same situation over here. I'm just going to take that main avenue down. It's not really an avenue, it's just a, str just a road really, just a connecting road into different parts of the city. This part of the city, I should probably explain that also, is not really gonna be that dense. So traffic is gonna be kind of manageable. But still, some kind of a surface road would be kind of clunky to just uh, intertwine with all the all the tram roads and uh, the pedestrian paths because there's there are quite a few, yeah. And obviously combined with the train station, as you can see, there will have to be some kind of like vertical also connections, you know, stairs, elevators, and just adding a road into the equation would make it much more difficult. So let's just go underground, you know. It's just adding to some vertical feel of the place. So yeah, like no problem with that whatsoever. It's actually very, very welcome. Right, so these kinds of entrances to the platforms. Um, I'm just going to do these stairs once on the side of it because there is the space for it, but everywhere else we don't really have the space. So I'm just going to do the usual elevators. I am using, using the usual elevators because uh, it's pretty much the only one that I have. I have one more, but it's transparent. I'm actually going to be using it here as a decoration on the side of the stairs, but we cannot really have like actual gameplay pedestrians walk through it because yeah, you would just see how terrible it looks. So I'm just going to be using the, the good old elevators everywhere else. Uh, I like them. Yeah, sure, they are getting a little repetitive in the city, also because I I heavily used it in Aurelia previously, but uh, you know, it's just an elevator, it's okay. And it's actually nice that it's like a unifying element to some of these projects. Uh, did I talk about this before? But uh, in case I didn't, this is, uh, this is what I was talking about in case I did, uh, just doubling this building and putting some kind of decorations on the roof. These kinds of, I, I think that these are vanilla dishes. I'm just making them very oversized with uh, prop anarchy and uh, also some kind of Ronixes, I believe, antennas on the, on the roofs. Uh, it's not particularly tall building, but it is the tallest building in the area. So it makes sense to have some of these. And if it's some kind of control tower for the railways, then yeah, that's just also making sense. But again, most importantly, it's just a decoration. It looks nice. Now, we need to do some kind of supports because obviously the train station is elevated, so it must not just hang in the air. I decided to not really... Uh, do it all that super precisely. I'm just filling some of these otherwise dead areas with these concrete uh, walls, basically, yeah? So they are forming these like larger concrete blocks on which the uh, the train station just sits. And uh, it's also hiding some irregularities with the detailing. So it's, it's very beneficial to do it this way. It's much, much simpler than to just do like some perpendicular sets of pillars where I would just need to put something in between them, maybe like shops or something, but uh, I just really didn't want to do that in this particular place. So this is kind of a shortcut, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. And I'm actually going to use these kinds of walls on the sides of the train station to put uh, some of the hanging wines on top of them or the, the IVs, yeah, whatever they're called, the ones that I'm using in nearby areas. So there is actually some continuity between the detailing elements, which is nice. Now, speaking of detailing, this is finally, this is finally what I wanted to do. When I did this loop, I decided that it's actually going to be kind of in the nature, yeah? That ties to the overall idea that this is the outskirts, almost, of the city, yeah? Asturias is not going to be that large, yeah? Let's face it already at this point. Asturias really cannot even be that large. Uh, 
we have City Skylines 2 coming and uh, I really cannot make Asturias for like the next two years, let's face it, you know. And the city is already getting very detailed, the limits are not really bad or anything like that, but uh, it will get there eventually. So I just, I'm just going to start wrapping up the city in this direction. And this train station is the like a very slow start of that, okay? So basically the inner ring tram line is, well, kind of going to, kind of going to enclose the higher density downtown. Yeah, let's call it that way. That's probably going to be uh, very visually uh, apparent when we start doing the more of the, of the inner ring trams, uh, tram tracks. Now, anyway, back to, back to some of these details. So, I did this pond, yeah. That's just going to reinforce the idea that this place is really starting to, to get uh, lower density and there are just more open areas and just some kind of parks and a pond. A pond is also very welcome because of colors, yeah. Because it's blue, it's actually not really blue because it's not uh, very deep and uh, since I did the changes with the mixer to make like shallow water a little greener, because it's making the coastline look so much better, like very tropical actually, kind of like cartoony tropical, but still very nice. Uh, it means that this, this pond is going to be a little greener than I would like, but it still brings some shade of blue into this place, which is nice. So together with the brick uh, paths, pedestrian paths, and uh, you know, obviously the grass everywhere and all the trees later, it's yeah, creating some interesting contrast. So that's kind of nice. And uh, I'm actually going to do some interesting thing uh, with the night lights, as, as you will see, you will see. Now, for some reason, in this particular project, doing these pedestrian paths was so painful. Uh, I did some kind of mistake, so it's kind of on me, but some of these pedestrian paths were snapping like crazy to the train station's uh, tracks. Uh, I never saw them do that before. I actually usually struggle with paths not snapping, to the tracks. If you if you have seen that tutorial video where I talked about creating the custom uh, stations, then you could have seen that the paths don't really want to snap to the tracks unless you actually force them to. But in this project, they were snapping left and right, up and down actually, mostly. And that was super annoying. I spent hours doing that. Well, not really hours, maybe like an hour. But still, it was kind of unusual. I'm not really sure if I'm doing something wrong. Uh, it's been some time since I've opened Asturis. I've been mostly doing Altengrad uh, projects uh, like in advance right now. But still, I don't know what happened, but uh, well, it was kind of a pain. Anyway, but it's working right now, so that's fine. You know, In the end, it doesn't really matter how we reached the uh, end result, right? Right, so more details, uh, these kinds of tunnel portals. We already did the one on the other side. In here, I did not really want to spend that much time doing it. So just like the usual kind of 90 degree uh, corner concrete, you know, shape, sculpture, maybe just something. So it's not completely flat, not completely straight and a little bit different, a little bit more interesting and then cover it all up. Now, by the way, the underground road in this particular case I'm actually not using a tunnel version of the road. I'm actually using the highways because the highways that I'm using, the MSEs, you know, the Metropolitan State Expressway Pack that I'm using in Asturias for all of the highways right now, uh, they actually have surface networks that do not pull the terrain, which means that you can actually put them lower below the terrain and they are just going to clip the terrain and that's it, but they're not going to change it, which is why I'm using it over here because the vanilla tunnel entrances or any kind of tunnel entrances are very tall, yeah? And I did not really have the space over here. I did not want to have the road go that deep. I just want to have it go below the tram tracks, below this pedestrian area, but not any deeper than it needs to be. It's, it's not really that big of a deal if it did, but it would just make the area look much heavier. Yeah, I don't want to do that. So I had to not do actual tunnel entrances, but these kinds of surface networks and just cover all the, you know, things that are visible uh, through it. And otherwise it's perfectly fine. It's a highway, so pedestrians cannot even go there. Uh, hopefully cars cannot really spawn, despawn there. And it's working, so, you know, that's fine. And it's not really that long, this tunnel, so doing some kind of details on top of it is absolutely fine. And I suppose that was partially the reason why I did those big concrete blocks below the train station to just hide some of the 
you know, irregularities on the surfaces, but otherwise it turned out looking, you know, fine. You can't even tell that it's not an actual tunnel. Well, maybe you can because you saw me build it, but still, you know, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Right, so this is it. I'm just wrapping it up. I'm just doing some of the rocks and some of the trees and finally night lights. Right, so this train station building, let's make it shine red, okay? Because I can, because why not? There are no other colors in this area. This is not a particularly high density area. Like I said, we are on the outskirts, maybe like like a border between outskirts and suburbs actually. So I don't really want to plaster these buildings with ads, but we can still do some kind of interesting colors. And there I was doing like a little thing that's actually looking surprisingly good. And that is I put lights, blue lights, very deep below the bottom of that little pond. It's not really going to illuminate the water because water is just not reflective to light in this game and it doesn't even display shadows or anything like that, but uh, it's going to illuminate all the rocks and the tram tracks, for example, even the trams when they are running over it, but very lightly, very dimly, yeah? So there's gonna be like this blue glow as if the pond was somehow radioactive or something like that, yeah? I think I actually, as part of this project, I think I actually did that even for the bay, you know, with the marina, so, I'm not exactly sure, because we already built that, I already did cinematics from that, uh, so I'm not exactly sure how to show you, like, which project am I going to do nearby that I can uh, show you that place, but maybe it can be visible from some kind of first-person ride. Uh, now that I think of it, maybe the coastline tram, maybe I'm going to do, like, a daytime ride in one direction and nighttime in the opposite direction. That might actually look good, but I will see. I will have to you know, tweak some nighttime graphics because they are not exactly optimal right now, but we will see, we will see, you know, it's it's kind of in the future still before I do that, so I can always, you know, add it later. Anyways, these are all the finished cinematics. I'm really satisfied that I was managed to do this place kind of low density in the end, or like medium density, yeah, because we really need to do that transition into some kind of suburbs, I suppose. I don't really want to end the city, like, suddenly, you know, just high density, high density, and then bam, farmlands or something. No, I would like to do some kind of suburbs to exactly do these kinds of shots, yeah? So we can just see the city, like, getting taller to the center. I think that's going to look much better. And you can see here the glow of the pond. Oh yeah, that's, that's looking kind of good. And that red, almost like evil looking uh, train station building. Yeah, kind of like an evil villain lair or some, something like that. But anyway, that is going to be it for today's Asturias episode. Thank you guys for watching it. Hope you liked it. Please, if you did, do all the things below the video, the clicking, writing, subscribing, sharing, and these kinds of things. And huge thanks to all the channel members that this channel currently has. I really appreciate all your direct support. Thank you for supporting me and what I'm doing over here. If you want to become a channel member as well, you can do so through the links and the button below the video. Take care and goodbye.